Item number SCP-1364 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures At this time, there are no means of keeping SCP-1364 completely safe and methods are currently being researched into the minimization of damage dealt to SCP-1364. SCP-1364 should be contained with in two interconnected 10 meter by 10 meter by 5 meter chambers with 40 centimeter padded impact resistant polyester lining on all inside surfaces. The areas should remain completely devoid of light and external sound. The containment chambers should be kept completely empty to ensure SCP-1364 remains docile and healthy. Any observation of damage taken by SCP-1364 or any signs of pain should be dealt with promptly with any resources available to aid in minimizing damage. One cell is to be kept at a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius at all times. The cell opposite is to be kept at 30 degrees Celsius. The chambers should be positioned in such a way to prevent easy access between each for SCP-1364. Personnel are forbidden to interact with SCP-1364 in any way safe for manipulation of a projector using shadows to depict calming situations on the wall of SCP-1364's containment chamber. A Foundation-issued audio CD entitled Nature Sounds is to be on constant playback with the end cell at a volume of 10 decibels, looping alongside playback similar to shepherd tones. The chamber itself is to be filtered for contaminants on a low cycle each hour. Description SCP-1364 is a small mammalian creature resembling an anteater. SCP-1364 is friendly on certain occasions, attempting to embrace researchers with an elongated tongue located near its nostrils. It does not appear to be sapient and shows limited if diminishing signs of intelligence. SCP-1364 has extremely poor endurance and mobility depending on its current state. SCP-1364's physical form remains relatively static when unexposed to a significant amount of stimulus. However, the creature grows increasingly vulnerable to even the most negligible of stimulus with prolonged exposure. The subject seems to respond normally to stimulus on the first exposure, but repeated stimulus is exponentially more harmful. Despite the presence of a digestive system, SCP-1364 does not seem to require sustenance. Testing reveals that the creature in fact bears better without it. As the process of mastication, swallowing, digestion, and defecation results in significant bodily stress, the cause of SCP-1364's extreme vulnerability has not yet been discovered. As the body shows no specific physical anomalies, SCP-1364 appears to heal at a standard rate when left alone. The creature was discovered after repeated reports of its disappearing and reappearing beneath floors and inside walls at Reap Zoo's nursery prior to containment. Amnestics are administered to witnesses after recovery. Addendum 1364A Documentation of First Experiment with SCP-1364 by Psych Biologist Dr. Sanders Hi there little guy, we're going to... SCP-1364 appears to shield its ears with its paws. Hey, what's wrong little fella? SCP-1364 begins to cry, emitting liquid from tear glands and vocalizing a low wail. Dr. Sanders attempts to pick up SCP-1364. SCP-1364 starts to up its eyes. Skin in contact with tears begins to burn slightly. Hair begins to fall off. Someone get in here! What the hell is wrong with this thing? SCP-1364 begins bleeding from the ears. Abort testing! 
Dr. Sanders places SCP-1364 on the floor of the containment chamber and exits the cell. SCP-1364 curls into a fetal position, begins walking back and forth. End log. Addendum 1364-B Stimulus Testing Forward. Repeated applications conducted within five minutes of each other. The effect of exponential sensitivity seems to reset after a period of a few hours. Stimulus Effect Physical Water. Hair loss. Subject appears distressed. Sailing. Nitrable skin irritation. Subject appears distressed. Exposure to candle. Subject covered in first degree burns. Subject becomes temporarily comatose. Droplet of ethanoic acid. Droplet burned through subject paw. Subject appears extremely distressed. Subject rubbed against copper. One-time application. Data expunged. Subject dropped lightly on natural rubber surface. No noticeable physical effects. No stimulus. Subject appears distressed. Sound. Utterance of hello by Dr. Sanders. Conversational. Three times application. No noticeable physical effect. Subject appears distressed. Utterance of hello by Dr. Sanders. Voiced raised. Three times applications. Discharge of blood from ear canal. Subject appears distressed. Light. Daylight. Ten hours. No noticeable physical effect aside from very mild skin irritation. Fluorescent office light. Eight hours. Subject appears disoriented. Eyes closed tightly. Aimed blood light. Two hours. Light appears to pass through the subject in certain places. In these spots, the skeletal system of SCP-1364 is clearly visible, as are the circuitry system and some internal organs. Here appears to grow white. Subject appears to levitate until the light is switched off. No physical damage can be noted aside from negligible burns. Arc lamp, one hour. Similar results as previous. Although all internal structure of SCP-1364 is completely visible. Beam at 30 billion candle power, 45 seconds. Subject appears to disappear while the light is working. Personnel equipped with welding goggles attempting to make physical contact with SCP-1364 are unsuccessful. SCP-1364 is found on the inside of the cell wall and was clearly visible when the power from the light is removed. Note, further physical tests are not recommended, although research is currently underway regarding the cause of the particular transmodification during the copper testing. Note, at this point you will probably worry of non-termination attempts. But this item is extremely unlikely to be approved unless you knew that in advance. Researcher, Dr. Norms. Item, show an image of SCP-1364 and ask if it knows anything. Tissue test record, not applicable. Termination log, SCP-682 made the following statement. The yin to go with my yang, or my yin. I'll never fully understand your disgusting figures of speech. But let me save you to trouble. Killing that thing won't do anything to me.